Restaurant Sacred Recipes are brought to you by the Pat Whitley Restaurant Program, Sunday mornings from 10 to 1 on AM 680 WRKO Boston. We let you be the food critic. And by Pat's Cruises at patscruises.com. My name is Mike Higgins. I'm a chef of the Old Salt Restaurant in Hampton, New Hampshire. Um, today we're going to be making a nice, fresh New England clam chowder. Um, first of all, you need to start with some great ingredients uh, before you make your clam chowders or anything else for that matter. So we have celery, onions, potatoes, cream, uh, clams, clam broth. Uh, these are the clams that you would buy and you would get at the, uh, your local retail store, with like three ounce cans. Uh, you need 12 ounces for my recipe, along with some clam broth. Um, fresh parsley, parsley we grow outside in our own uh, herb garden here. Um, these are the types of clams here that, uh, that we purchase for the restaurant ourselves. We get larger cans because we make it much larger quantities. Um, when we get those clams, we get them whole, so we dice them up ourselves uh, so we get a less consistent clam in the, uh, in the uh, chowder itself, which is great. These are what the clams begin with. So uh, this is a cherry stone clam. You know, they open them up here. And you know, we open up the clams, and this is the clam that you see, and then they end up whole clams. We get a little larger clam sometimes, and then they dice, they dice up here. We get a little less consistent clam in, in, the, uh, in the chowder, which is really nice. You get some big pieces in, little pieces that go all throughout. One of the real secrets to uh, clam chowder is the cream that you use. Now, this is a local cream, cream from a local farm. This is actually uh, made in, uh, or farmed from Haverhill, New Hampshire, uh, Hatchland Farms, and uh, it's, it's a pasteurized cream, but it's not ultra pasteurized, so you have a much higher uh, butter fat content, so it's a nice sweeter cream, and it, uh, it really enhances the chowder. First, we start cooking our bacon, and we take the bacon, uh, and we want to cook it on a medium heat because we don't want to get any little black chunks or, or burnt pieces in there. and. Uh, and listen to that, you can almost smell it, can't you? That's great. And uh, so we'll cook the bacon down and then we're, we're gonna save those drippings and we're gonna cook our potatoes and onions and celery and stuff right in that bacon. So then we'll take this bacon, uh, when we remove it from the pan, uh, we can save this bacon for uh, BLT sandwiches the next day or we can uh, uh, crumble it up, put it right in the chowder. That's what we normally like to do. Now I'll always, you know, I get a quarter inch dice of my potatoes and stuff like that. I usually put my potatoes in first. Uh, once again, you want to keep this on a, on a nice low heat, a nice low flame, because you don't want to get any burnt pieces in there. Um, while that's cooking and simmering, what I'll do is then I dice up my onions and celery. I've already done that for time here. Um, then I can add my onions and celery. And that's beautiful. And then we. Uh, We'll just saute that up for a while, um, keep that on a nice low heat as I said, and we're going to cook that on a low heat for about 20 minutes. Um, we'll let that cook. Okay, now we've sauteed our onion, celery, and potatoes for about 20 minutes. They're all nice and tender and uh, cooked up nice. Potatoes are still a little firm, but there's still going to be some cooking once we add the clam broth. So we're going to just add a little butter in there and let that melt down. That's beautiful. We let that melt in, uh, and by you know adding the butter when you add your clam broth, it's not like adding your uh, a liquid right into your bacon drippings, uh, which would splatter all up. So that helps out quite a bit. So then we can add the clam broth, and now we're going to bring that up to a boil. Now we can turn up our heat a little, um, and this is going to you know help finish cooking the potatoes. And it'll help cook those onions down, so you won't even you know you won't even see and notice those onions in there, but you'll just get that great flavor. Can add a little par fresh parsley, pinch of black pepper, and that's just a taste. Uh, beautiful stuff. 
I always add my clams last uh, because they're already pre-cooked and stuff and I don't want to get them all, all rubbery and stuff like that. So once I, once I get this boiling and I start to thicken this, and when we make this, we make just a base. We don't add any of our dairy until we're actually reheating it for a second time and getting ready to serve it. Um, that gives us a much better shelf life. We don't have to worry about the cream breaking down or anything like that. You do have to let it sit for a few minutes um, just so you can get you know, all those flavors extracted into the cream. So we have that at, at a nice uh, nice simmer. We've been simmering for about 15, 15 minutes. It's actually reduced our um, clam broth down a little as well uh, and really enhanced the, uh, the clam flavor in it. So then I can add a little, uh, little flour and a couple of spoons of flour. You want to you um, turn this back down now. You want to simmer it again. Uh, make sure you get all the lumps out of the, clam, out of, out of the flour. But that'll stir in nicely. And then once I, once I get that going and I get that thickened, I will take my clams and then I will add my clams at this point. Um, and the clams still have a lot of juice in them too, so you're actually going to see it's going to thin it back out a touch, but then you, you need to just let it simmer for a while and that'll thicken up to a nice, nice paste. And you want it nice and thick, almost like a pancake batter or something like that. Um, you're going to mix it when you get this base. You want to mix it about 50-50 with the cream. So now what I've done is I've transferred my base um, and I've got it nice and thick and this is the consistency you want it. Uh, I've transferred it into a bigger pot because I'm going to add the cream to it now and I'm actually going to double uh, the volume that I've made. And you can take this base and you can, uh, you, you know, you can cut it in half, put half in your refrigerator and it'll hold for a couple weeks easy uh, because once again you have no dairy products in there. Uh, but that's getting nice and thick and it'll continue to thick so we do want to simmer it um, you know once we once we get this cream in there and this is once again this is a nice fresh cream it's a New Hampshire cream um, beautiful beautiful product um, but I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just sit here I'm gonna let that simmer now I'm gonna really reduce the heat get it on as low, low as I can and I'm going to just heat that up nice and slow uh, in order to not break the cream. I want to bring it up to about 160 degrees um, and it's going to thicken up and you know as, as it sits it's going to get a little thicker and thicker and that's, uh, that's a great great product there.